Hey you guys, this is book review number nine. Ooh. This is uh, travel books, and unlike seven and eight, I will be covering a book covered from a first person perspective. It's called Hotel on the Roof of the World by Alec Lassure, who grew up in the Channel Islands between Britain and France. But anyway, the book is about Alec who was a hotel manager in Europe and decided to, not really on a whim, but uh, that he wanted to take a job as a hotel manager in China. So it's an adventure, I don't know, whatever. But uh, the really the only place he could get was in Tibet, which at the time was just barely accessible to the, to the rest of China, let alone the West had minimal, um, I mean, it wasn't in a complete state of dilapidation, but was what you would call sort of a middle-aged, or a, yeah, like a middle-aged society, like feudal society, um, with communist overtones, of course. The communists were uh, meddling, but really not, hadn't developed it yet, like it's developed today. But anyway, um, I really enjoyed it. It's quite clear that uh, Alec, uh, first profession is not a writer because he really didn't uh, reach for themes either grand or beyond um, insights into anything you know uh, that really cut to the bone of the civilization. A lot of things, a lot of themes that he covered are kind of themes that are known about China, like the uh, inefficiency of the um, uh, communist work system and how they had all these people that were ineffectual and infunctional and you know from everyone even even people that weren't in the hotel that he worked at uh you know from the post office to uh, the way food supply worked to the way that the booking agency worked and it was just sort of a, a comedy of errors um but it really sort of gave an insight into the uh, so, sort of a good insight into how the hotel industry works from a negative perspective while at the same time it didn't show compassion for certain sections of uh, the society I mean it, it was certainly critical but uh, I feel like he did not regret his time there. He certainly learned some lessons. But, uh, yeah, and there'd just be things like uh, occupancy would go down to like 3% during the winter time, which is unsustainable for any business. Or when an auditor came um, from the Holiday Inn, which was actually uh, why I went there, they wouldn't uh, hire Westerners except for the fact that this was the only Western Hotel in the city of Lhasa in Tibet. All the others were run by Chinese, but because this was owned by the Holiday Inn, they used Westerners, um, which also, by the way, made it uh, uh, as infunctional as it was, much more functional than many of the other ones, which were just grotesque in their um, you know, lack of uh, sanitation, things like that. But anyway, when a representative of the Holiday Inn came, they had something like a 58 point checklist and if any Holiday Inn around the world has more than one uh, thing wrong on this checklist, they're immediately shut down until it can be fixed. But uh, in this instance, they had like 14 or 15 things that uh, were wrong with the hotel, but because there was really nothing they could do um, to fix them, in the immediate at least, and because it was really the only Western hotel in Lhasa, meaning a pipeline to all Westerners wanting to visit the city, uh, the, the uh, auditor pretty much just let the inspection pass. I mean, certainly graded them down, but just was, the hotel was able to be kept open. And you'd hear about things like just, you know, live food that was to, to be uh, cooked for the guests later that night, uh, escaping into the lobby of the hotel and freaking everybody out or, you know, overbooking in the summertime by 123% or just the wafts and fumes of the hotel, uh, 
including one time a person died in the hotel and they actually had to store them in one of the rooms until uh, the family could come and uh, have a proper burial. Just very, very wild stuff. But, you know, I feel like uh, wild stuff, but accurately analyzed in um, the context of its characters. Not just like, he wasn't just looking to take pot shots at uh, uh, the society or something. Like, uh, uh, he had great affection for, um, uh, you know, certain assistants and, you know, just anything, like in any working office. Um, he really wrote at it uh, from it from the perspective of an employee rather than uh, a journalist or whatever. But, uh, Let's see, what else can I say about this book? I don't know, it just talks about, uh, you know, the Western oddballs that wound up in a place like this. He seemed pretty normal, but just the uh, overly eccentric uh, Italian executive owner or executive manager. He was only a uh, secondary manager um, in charge of bookings, I believe. Um, that would just fly into rages and then come back ten minutes later and pretend like everything is fine. Or the uh, you know German chef who basically said "f off" one day and then just walked out and no one ever saw from him again. Or uh, the hikers that um, you know nearly got stuck on Everest, but uh, or nearly got stuck on Everest, but claimed that they had more difficulty staying at the hotel than they did in summoning the mountain. <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. But it's a highly recommended book. Uh, if you like a book that's an easy read, like an entertaining easy read that gets you into this genre of um, writing, you know, like personal travel writing, you know, something like In Siberia might not be the best because it's just so um, uh, clear and graphic and uh, kind of depressing. But this one was an easy read, but was also accurate in its analysis. And I enjoyed it immensely. So I'm going to leave it at that. Hotel on the Roof of the World by Alec Le Sur. All right, see you next time, guys.